Ryan's Priebus, good morning to you, sir. Good to have you with us good today. Good morning, Martha. You know, there's a lot of ways to have these meetings. Most of them have been behind closed doors at Trump Tower. This is the second meeting that Mitt Romney had. Uh, he was at uh, the Bedminster Golf Course last time. But this was so public. There were cameras that were allowed in. Why so public a, a courtship between Mr. Trump and Mr. Romney? Well, as you know, I mean, we're also getting used to having a press pool with us, and that's part of the process, is that when you're President of the United States, and in this case, President-elect, um, it's par for the course to allow a quick photo with the press. Um, they're stationed usually outside, either wherever we go or at Trump Tower, one way or the other. Uh, this was going to be uh, public. So, um, look, I, I think what people should be seeing here is a huge encouraging sign about leadership and the ability of President-elect Trump to just talk to the best people in America regardless of background and make sure that in every decision that's made that the best person to lead our country is chosen for each of these spots. And that's what he's trying to do. So, but why is this particular relationship apparently very important to Mr. Trump? Because I think he sees a lot of talent in Governor Romney. Um, it, nothing's certain, and it's still up in the air. But uh, he wants to make sure that when he's talking to Mayor Giuliani, he's talking to David Petraeus, Senator Corker, Governor Romney, that when he makes the decision, it's the decision that's best for America, regardless of background. But, you know, there's obviously a comfort level that needs to take place, and that's sort of the piece that's being worked on right now. And, I, I, you know, they had a great dinner last night, very encouraging. But, again, not a done deal, but certainly positive. You know, there's been a lot of discussion that Mitt Romney would have to apologize for calling him a phony, calling him a con man, uh, really going out of his way, as Kellyanne Conway said, to try to tear down Donald Trump during the course of this, this campaign. Uh, last night he came before the cameras, we showed a little bit of it a moment ago, and said he was really encouraged by the way things are going and the people that Donald Trump is surrounding himself with. Did, is that enough? Was that the apology that, that uh, you all were looking for? Well, I wouldn't say there was, there's no quid pro quo here. I mean, there's no, you know, there, there's no deal as far as what you say. But he has to have some comfort level. You have to have, but, you know, Mitt Romney say well, sure. enough nice things so that you guys feel like, <laughs> you, you know, like, like you can maybe bury that videotape about the Trump steaks and the Trump vodka. Well, look, I mean, all those things are important, but, you know, the comfort level is the most important. But I think what people need to understand is, and what I've learned, and I'm sure some of either you or some of the folks there at Fox and other places that, and, and people across America, a lot of people don't know Donald Trump. And when you get to know this person, you find out how gracious and personable, a uh, big, big heart. And, and you see that by the fact that he's actually sitting down now two times with Governor Romney, a person that has a big enough heart and a, and, and a willingness to put the American people first that he's even in a place of talking to Governor Romney and, in fact, then also having real substantial personal conversations that are very positive. And so that's a big person. And a lot of people wouldn't do that. But I, I, I think that saying. should be what... You, That's you know, what people should see in, in President Trump. I, I think it's, it's fascinating, uh, actually, uh, to watch all of this unfold. I think a lot of people feel that way. Um, we spoke to Mike Huckabee earlier, though, and, and he seems a little testy about the way all of this is unfolding. Uh, watch this. Sure. Both Reince Priebus and uh, Donald Trump were having filet. On Mitt Romney's plate, there was a big, big slice of crow. And so <laughs> I didn't know if you could catch that or not. Look, the irony here is that it's not so much about the relationship that Donald Trump has with Mitt Romney. It's the relationship that Mitt Romney has with the voters who elected Donald Trump. Because Mitt Romney said that they were a bunch of suckers to follow him. Yeah, he feels hurt, it appears, that uh, a lot of people were grouped in with Mitt Romney's criticism. And you look at the fact that Mike Huckabee and Rudy Giuliani and Newt Gingrich, some of the strongest supporters from early on of Donald Trump, have not appeared on that big screen that we put up showing people who've retained positions with the administration. Well, I understand where the governor's coming from, and, 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 and I think and, and President-elect Trump understands it, too. Uh, that's why this is a sensitive subject. That's why it's something that it's going to take a lot of deliberation. And that's why I don't think anyone should expect 
you know, anything imminent on this position yet. But, but I do think that people should be encouraged by the fact that we have a president-elect that's willing to talk to people that are in, that either very knowledgeable, very talented, very smart, to either choose those people or, at the very least, glean information from people that you, we can learn from. So don't be discouraged by any of this other than to say that um, the right decision will be made for the American people um, and I, I can assure everybody that that's exactly the mindset that President-elect Trump has and it's a very presidential mature position and place for him to be in and that's where he's at every day and you're seeing it by the appointments that he's making across the board. Well, uh, we remember him saying, I can be very presidential. You just watch. Uh, and, and we're well, seeing, he's, we're he's seeing been, it's been an incredible that transition. Person emerging um, during this transition. W what about what can we look forward to in terms of, of these appointments? You said nothing is imminent on the Secretary of State. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't expect anything today uh, on this or, or, or tomorrow. I, I, I just think that he is going through a deliberative process to, in his own mind, to kind of cut out the noise and make the smartest decision that he can make for the American people. He's President of the United States. Uh, nothing's going to change that. And so now it's a matter of making sure that the best and brightest are around him. That's what he pledged to the American people. Um, and that's what he's doing. What's the focus in terms of the next announcements? What, what should we expect? What's coming next? Well, I think you saw some things today um, that will be more formalized. During the day, in Steve Mnuchin at Treasury, uh, Wilbur Ross at Commerce. Um, these are people that were part of, and just for the record, so people understand, when Donald Trump's plans were laid out months ago, and when the speech was given about the first hundred days, it was Steve Mnuchin, Wilbur Ross, and others, and obviously President-elect Trump, editing and, 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 and working on the plans that help write those plans. Right. And so these are people that are in step and in the, in the wheelhouse of what Donald Trump wants to do economically, and now they're in positions to help carry out that task. What can you tell us before I let you go about the separation from his businesses? What's going to happen when, you know, one of his children who he talks to all the time says, you know, we're talking about this deal for this hotel in this foreign country. How is that going to work? Well, you just wait and see. I mean, on the 15th, the announcement will be made in December in a couple of weeks. Uh, but what people should glean from all of this is that there is a plan that's being worked on. There are really smart ethics lawyers that are involved. Uh, but look, people understood what Donald Trump, what he did in his businesses before he was elected. I mean, it would be nuts to believe that he was elected knowing the, the things that he built, the hospitality that he's a part of, the retail aspect of his businesses you know, three weeks ago, and then to expect all of that to just right. fizzle away the okay. next day. It's just not reasonable. All right. We'll look forward to hearing more about that and the rally tomorrow in Indiana. Ryan, thank you very much. Good to see you as always. You bet, Martha.